Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It looks like this is a Horse Center edition from vacation, but we don't want to miss doing a Horse Center for all of you folks. Where are you at, Brian? That's right, Matt. We can't miss Horse Center. I'm I'm in Tybee Island, Georgia, not of all places, where my family and I are enjoying the beach. How about yourself? I am up in the Saratoga area and doing the show from a meeting room in the Greenwich, New York Public Library so that I've got some internet. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, uh, mysteries solved. Without further ado, let's jump right into the show, Matt. Uh, hey, first thing I want to ask you, because last weekend was a, a weekend, a holiday weekend of big performances, Matt. I'm going to give you four names. I want you to tell me who is most impressive, who's going to be a champion this year. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Uh, the first name is Gulfport. The second name is Olympiad. The third name is Life is Good. And finally, we go with Charging. Some very good performances there, Brian. But I, at the top of the list with the original question, I gotta, I've got to have Life is Good and Olympiad in there. But boy, that uh, older male dirt division is sure looking awfully strong right now. Olympia makes me just want to, just a tiny little bit, Brian, wants me to start thinking about Cigar. And Life is Good, of course, has just been brilliant. Yeah, Life is Good was absolutely terrific. He put away Speaker's Corner like we thought he would. Uh, somewhat similar to Flightline, maybe not quite as easily as Flightline. Flightline's only won one race this year, run one race. Olympia, it's run five, Matt. That's huge. Gulfport looks like a two-year-old. The son of Uncle Mo by Steve, trained by Steve Asmussen, looks like a monster juvenile at this point. Two for two in Kentucky. Uh, charge it. 23 lengths, Matt. It was shades of Secretariat. I'm not saying he looked like Secretariat. I'm not saying he's good as Secretariat, but that margin of victory in the Dwyer was just crazy. It sure was. And, and Todd Pletcher himself uh, in the stretch run of that of the race where Charge It was just drawing off, actually said, wow, how far ahead is this horse? And peeked back at the 31 length Secretariat poll in the stretch to to get a feeling. Yeah, absolutely. That was impressive. And I, I, I think, you know, a lot of us have thought charge it is a three-year-old of massive potential. And I think, I think he started to show that in the Dwyer and the Derby, you know, trapped up a Gladys checked early. Uh, nothing goes right in the Derby for a lot of horses. Charge it was one of them. Uh, charge it. You're not going to convince me that he won't be a Travers winner. I mean, I know there's a lot of good horses pointing for the Travers, but Charge It looks like the real deal. I can't wait to see what he does the rest of the year. Life is good, is back. Olympiads has been here all year long and watch out for Gulfport. But Matt, we're talking about races this weekend. A lot of big races around the country. We're going to focus on Belmont Park, Matt. I think these turf races, this experiment that, that uh, Naira did with uh, these big three-year-old, both gender turf races is starting to really work because these are the best fields for the Belmont Derby and the Belmont Oaks yet. We're, we're going to actually go ladies first, Matt, if you will. The Belmont Oaks, often I've thought that the Europeans just exude class and, and stand over the American field. But in both the Oaks this year and the Derby, there are a lot of good American choices, Matt. Let's start with Chad Brown, as we often do on the turf. He's got some good fillies in here. Consumer Spending's won uh, some stakes races in a row. McCulloch looks like a filly who could break through at any time. And maybe Haughty is the best of all three. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. Chad's got three in the Oaks. And, and you mentioned the Naira experiment and putting up the big money, which they've done in hopes that they would get uh, – horses from overseas to come join the Americans. And that sure did work. They've got the big name uh, European tra uh, trainers. They've got Charlie Appleby, Joseph O'Brien, Aiden O'Brien, Charlie O'Brien, who won, uh, had such a great year in America last year. And Joseph O'Brien, if I recall, uh, uh, had a couple of big wins at big prices 
coming over. So yeah, I think the experiment has worked. Um, Chad's got three interesting horses, and and you mentioned Haughty. Um, yeah, Haughty has a a, a a shorter career, but uh, he, she has done very very little wrong last year. Her worst finish being a third place in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies uh, turf last year and came back to win the Penn Oaks on a soft track, which I, I heard was really closer to being a swamp. Yeah, Haughty, uh, that, that was impressive, but I, I don't know what she beat. She's going to yeah. move way, way up into uh, uh, the big leagues here in this Belmont Oaks, but Haughty has looked really good. She was taken down, I guess, in her career debut. And she didn't miss by much to uh, Pizza Bianca last year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf, but she's been impressive. She looks like well, all those good Chad, really good Chad Brown horses who are just ultra consistent and classy. McCulloch uh, has been a late runner who hasn't gotten up in three graded stakes tries, but uh, knocking on the door for sure. And computer spending, consumer spending has been solid. If nothing else, she's been very solid in New York. Yeah, two races this year have been very good uh, off the winter break, waiting for turf racing to uh, return with a first in the wonder again. And before that, a win in the memories of silver. Clearly another one for Chad Brown uh, that uh, is a very, very good uh, filly on the turf. Hey, a long shot I dabbled with uh, at, at, during the Kentucky Derby weekend, Matt, was New Year's Eve. She won uh, the uh, three-year-old Philly turf stake that day and looked very good doing it. New Year's Eve, I think, is a uh, kitten's joy that is getting better and better. I wouldn't sleep on her. I think she has what it takes possibly to pull off her second straight upset. Yeah, I agree. On my list of uh, top four uh, in this race, trained by Brendan Walsh, winner of the Edgewood stakes that you were referring to, and then before that um, – uh, maiden win and a and and allowance win at the fairgrounds. Yeah, and, and another good American. I I think the morning line doesn't show Cairo Memories the respect perhaps that she deserves in here. Matt Cairo Memories has been terrific in California. I'm not sure if ten furlongs out on the East Coast is going to be her cup of tea, but I think she's a very classy turf filly. And if you look at that excellent turf record, her only loss was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, where she wasn't near the top. But on the other hand, she didn't lose by much, and she had an awful trip. Cairo Memories is, is another one, another good American you can't throw out here. Yep, two grade three wins at Santa Anita. And and I agree with you, Brian. You know, I think I rest with the same things that, you know, what kind of competition did she face in those races at Santa Anita and now chipping out east? But uh, certainly a promising beginning to her career. Absolutely. Now let's get to the Europeans, Matt Shipman. The Europeans have traditionally been tough in both the Belmont Oaks and the Belmont Derby. Perhaps they're a little bit more accustomed to running long, both of these races at a mile and a quarter on Saturday on the grass. And there's a deep lineup in both fields. Uh, we should start with Concert Hall, Matt, who has been a good filly from the get-go. Uh, she's lost her last few, but she's been running against very good fillies. Older fillies last time in a grade one, group one over there. She tried the uh, Epson Oaks before that, but I, I think Concert Hall might be the class of the group coming over from Europe. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and those losses were all in group one races um, in, uh, in Great Britain. And from what I understand, the, the most recent fifth place finish was a pretty troubled trip uh, where she ran into a great deal of traffic. And, and, you know, for those of you that may not be well versed in European racing, um, you know, when you're running in group ones over there, you are facing uh, some formidable turf horses. Um, in comparison to what we have in the U.S. And Concert Hall last year, as a two-year-old, was a Group 3 winner. Absolutely. She she looks tough. Aiden O'Brien, uh, Appleby, as you mentioned, he, she's got, uh, he has got a filly in here as well. Uh, but you're right. The European, why is European turf racing better than American turf racing in general? 
Well, they don't have dirt uh, for the most part. So that, that, that's a big part of it. Turf racing, of course, is the thing over in Europe. And uh, with the moonlight, Matt, uh, maybe not quite as many big races run as Concert Hall, but she's shown flashes of talent over there for Charlie Appleby. Yep, absolutely. Uh, her last race was in a grade one and has a, a victory at one of the major tracks uh, over there at Newmarket. With any of these Europeans, there's a reason why these Europeans are coming over. We've mentioned uh, certainly Aiden O'Brien and Char Charlie Appleby for all the success that they've had, and even a little bit uh, Joseph O'Brien as well, Matt. But there's a reason these horses are coming over for these big purses in America. Uh, and one of the reasons is these horses might like the American style of turf racing just a little bit better, whether it be tighter turns, uh, a stronger early pace, um, and firmer turf. So I wouldn't throw out any European in either of those races. Uh, of the other three that we haven't yet mentioned yet, Agartha is pretty interesting and Agartha has some speed. Yeah, that's for sure. And that's one that is for uh, Joseph O'Brien. I particularly like that uh, John Velasquez is getting on board. Um, she's got this year uh, yeah, fifth in a grade one, a second a couple of seconds in grade threes, but last year she won twice in group company, a group two and a group three as a two-year-old. And as good, Matt, as this field is, this 10-horse field for the Belmont Oaks, a very good betting races. I think you could make a case for a lot of the Americans. Some of the Europeans are, are tough and going to get bet, but there's uh, some interesting long shot Europeans as well. As good as this field is, I think it pales almost in comparison to what we see in the Belmont Derby. This, this before the fact, let's see what happens during the race and after the fact, but before the fact, I, I'm not sure that I've seen a better betting race this year than this 13 horse field in the Belmont Derby. You got a nine to two morning line favorite. You got some really good Europeans coming over. You have a bunch of Europeans coming over with some interesting long shots. But you have a ton of Americans in here, Matt, who are good. You have a horse trying turf for the first time. You've got graded stakes winners all over the place for the Americans. Uh, you got Americans who are lightly, some, some of them lightly raced and could be really getting good. You have a horse coming out of the Kentucky Derby who was a multiple graded stakes winner on the turf before, among other surfaces. It is just an awesome 13 horse field for this Belmont Derby. Yeah, that's quite a list of uh, credentials that you mentioned for this field. It's hard to put a field together. When we're talking about just three-year-olds here, Brian, uh, to put a field together of three-year-olds uh, that is as distinguished and qualified as this is, I don't know, compared to maybe the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, uh, completely different, but yeah, yeah, it compares to the Kentucky Derby. I was going to say the, uh, the, 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 the lost series at Arlington Park that I loved so, for so many years, but of course they went into older horses and they generally didn't have his fields as big as this. But yeah, uh, again, kudos to Naira. They're putting together a special turf series. Maybe that'll make me miss what Arlington Million Day was uh, just a little bit. But this Belmont Derby is good. Let's start with the Europeans this time, Matt. They're the two favorites on the morning line, and it's it's a wacky morning line. Uh, just horses nine to two, five to one, six to one, ten to ones, twelve to ones. No one over twenty to one, and I think there's good reason no one is over twenty to one because every single horse in the field has some class. But we'll start with Stone Age, uh, thirteen post. He he looks slightly the best in european uh european racing what he's accomplished uh I, I worry a little bit about the 13 hole though a little bit yeah brian maybe not as much as if we were talking about going a mile on the dirt course uh, uh and and obviously the european horses are used to uh running in bigger fields uh stone age as you mentioned brian nine to two favorite Think of that, Brian. Think of all the races we've done recently and how often do we have a nine to two favorite uh, in a big race? I guess maybe the Kentucky Derby sometimes. Uh, this one for uh, Aiden O'Brien. And a number of the Europeans in this race, uh, Brian, are coming from, I, I, I kind of like the name of the race, the Kazoo 
Derby, which is a group one. And, and a couple of days before the race, I, I asked you, what, Brian, what do you know about this Kazoo Derby? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the oldest races in the world, Matt. It's just, it's just the Epson Derby, and you're not going to get me to call it the Kazoo, the Kazoo <laughs> Derby. Of course, sponsorship uh, brings in names that we're uh, not yeah. always used to, but the Epson Derby, the English Derby, if you uh, English Derby, if you will, it's it's yeah. a gigantic race. And Desert Crown, uh, the undefeated winner, and Westover, the troubled horse who was third, who came back in the Irish Derby to to win that uh, for absolute fun, are two monsters. Uh, the fact that these horses in in this race coming over Stone Age and Nation's Pride, especially, uh, were bet uh, pretty pretty well in that race. Shows how well they were. Like Stone Age for Aiden O'Brien was coming off some big wins as a three year old. You could see him getting better as a two year old. The son of Galileo late in the year when he was stretched out to a, a route of ground. But his first two races this year were awesome. And he got bet in the Epson Derby. You know, there, there was some serious cut in the ground that day at a mile and a half uh, at, at Epsom Downs. So perhaps he will like this better. I think he is a distance horse. Maybe 10 furlongs is even a little short for Stone Age. Uh, but uh, the fact that he'll get firmer turf here than he did last time, certainly Stone Age is a horse who could be one of the best three-year-old grass horses in the world. Then you got Nation's Pride for Charlie Appleby, Matt. And uh, there's a lot to like with him as well. Yeah, I agree. So Brian, you know, you're saying in a race like the Epson Derby, sh shall we say, um, where Nation's Pride was eighth and Stone Age was sixth, that's nothing to uh, to be concerned about because of the quality of the field and, and the way the racing surface was and such. Um, Charlie Appleby with Nation's Pride got a couple of nice wins, one of them at Newmarket and one of them at Maidan. So this horse has already proven that he can travel. He's proven he can travel. He's probably proven himself at the distance for sure. At, he's proven himself at the distance of a mile and a quarter, and he's probably proven himself on firmer turf as well. Some other horses, Royal Patronage is also coming out of that race, and he ran some big races back as a two-year-old. He's run only against the best so far this year. If he takes to the American style of racing, I think he's a threat. You can't throw out the French horses completely either. Matt Machete has been feeding impl implementation, but both of them have some uh, class coming from France. And if they take to this style of racing, watch out as long shots. Now we get to the Americans, and I, I'm not even sure who to start with when we list this long uh, list of Americans in here, Matt, but it's a good group, the strongest American group we've ever had for the Belmont Derby. I guess we could start with the two six to one coath their choices. Tis the Bomb has been running on synthetic surfaces into the Kentucky Derby, of course, on dirt, didn't do a lot, didn't run terrible in the Kentucky Derby. Now he's back to turf, which we know he liked from last year. Oh, he was terrific on the turf last year, Brian. Uh, uh, winning the Grade Two Bourbon in Kentucky, and then uh, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf was a very good second. And then after that, it was uh, uh, they had a talented horse, and they said, uh, Kenny McPeak said, "Let's go on to the Kentucky Derby Trail," and that was what uh, Tis the Bomb did with some nice races on the synthetic at Turfway Park. And, you know, again, the kind of performance on the Kentucky Derby where you, you know, can't be overly disappointed in what he did. Yeah, his two-year-old form on turf was so good that you certainly have to uh, consider him here. He, he's run good races this year. The Kentucky Derby was kind of a middling performance where he had, I guess, a mild rally to uh finish in mid pack but uh that mile and a quarter experience might help as he comes back to what certainly looks like his favorite surface of turf i know our colleague ed derose has been high on this horse the whole way matt i'm not sold but back on turf he's certainly interesting in here it as is emmanuel who is a son of more than ready and more than ready's like the turf but emmanuel showed some very good dirt form uh, before switching to turf and taking the Pennine Ridge field all the way around. Yeah, and a nice speedy uh, victory there. Obviously took to the turf uh, uh, really, really well for Todd Pletcher. 
That was a great win, but boy, Brian, this is some tough field. It's a tough field, and I think he did get away with a very slow pace that day at a mile and eighth in the Pennine Ridge. I, I think this pace will be a little bit stronger than that. Certainly the presence of Classic Causeway could make it so mad. Classic Causeway, uh, of course, a two-time graded stakes winner at Tampa Bay Downs earlier this year, all on dirt, didn't do a heck of a lot in the Florida Derby, Kentucky Derby, came back with an improved performance for his new trainer, Kenny McPeak, in the Ohio Derby. Uh, he's got some grass breeding. Certainly, this just looks like a really tough spot to make your turf debut. That's for sure, Brian. No, I'm not throwing any shade on Classic Causeway, but uh, this is a tough field to make your first turf start in, especially just two weeks out from uh, the Ohio Derby. Kenny, Pick, Kenny McPeak is never one to uh, be afraid to roll the dice, and that's what they're doing with Classic Causeway. He thinks he's a distance horse, and I, I tend to think he might be right there, and he might like the grass. But, uh, yeah, tough field. He certainly should make life a little bit tougher for Emmanuel early on, though. Um, so many other options, as I mentioned. Stolen base, Matt, is coming off a, a career win. He's been a nice horse all along, but his last one – Took it to a new level with a win, uh, also Kentucky Derby weekend in the American turf. I will warn our uh, listeners here, Matt, that that American turf was a mile and a 16th. Now he steps up to a mile and a quarter. Yeah, and uh, that, that was Mike Baker. And obviously they thought enough of this horse to run him in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year where uh, – where he was seventh, but to come back and have a nice victory like that at Churchill Downs says that we're going to hear from uh, this three-year-old on the turf as the year goes by. Maybe not in a field like this, but, you know, uh, Maker's got a good one there. Yeah, may maybe not in a field like this. I'm going to agree with you there. Although a horse he beat in that race is a little bit more interesting to me because Side Dog has been very good. Uh, on the grass in his short career. I think he has the potential to move forward too. He didn't get it done against stolen base at a mile 16th that day, but he didn't run poorly either. I, I think he might be one that might appreciate the longer distance more than stolen base. Yeah, agreed. A lightly raced uh, uh, three-year-old for Graham Motion. Yeah, side dog trained by Graham Motion, who is certainly a master at getting horses ready for a race like a mile and a quarter on the grass. A couple of horses that Emmanuel beat in the Pennine Ridge. I already talked about that slow pace that day in the Pennine Ridge where Emmanuel was on the lead all the way around in his turf debut. But a couple of horses in that race are very interesting to me. I think Napoleonic War, 10 to 1 on the morning line, Matt, I just have a feeling that Napoleonic War is going to get bet a little bit more than that 10 to 1. Uh, a promising, lightly raced turf course for trainer Chad Brown. Yeah, and it, we'll see what kind of odds happen on that 10 to 1 on the morning line in this uh, big field. You do have the Chad Brown factor. He has improved um, in all four of his races in terms of his speed figures. Right, and if there was a little bit more pace, certainly the Napoleonic War could have very well have won that Pennine Ridge. Look out for him, but I, again, I think he's going to be lower than that 10 to 1 morning line in a very, very tough field. Another horse coming out of the Pennine Ridge that interests me a lot, Matt, is limited liability. Uh, he showed some talent for trainer Shug McGahee as a two-year-old, Kitten's Joy, a son of Kitten's Joy out of a blame mare. I, I think that yells a mile and a quarter to me. I really like his first two races because he hasn't gotten any pace. He flew late to get up in, in a Keeneland allowance in his first start of the year. And then, of course, he was way back off that slow pace by Emmanuel, and he still rallied awfully nicely to be third that day. So limited liability, 12 to 1 on the morning line. That seems about right, but he's an interesting horse to me. Yeah, that's for sure. Two races back off a layoff. He's gotten better going from that first race to the second race off the layoff. Um, that's a pattern that uh, bodes for uh, success. Boats for success and Kittens Joy and Blame in a mile and a quarter with just a little bit more pace. Uh, there, there's a lot to like about him. Uh, again, the Europeans are tough in here, and I think perhaps the Europeans are even a little bit classier in this race, just like the males, I would say, than the Belmont Oaks. But just a, I guess I've already said it, but an awesome field for this Belmont Derby, Matt. 
I think it's time to make our picks. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. And let me say, you know, we talked about the top trainers from Europe that are uh, sending horses over. We got some top European jockeys coming over to ride those horses. Frankie Dettori, Ryan Moore are slated to come over and ride in these big races. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And, and of course, Dettori's hooked up with uh, Charlie Appleby and Ryan Moore is hooked up with the Aiden O'Brien horses. But without further ado, let's talk about our top picks. We have the Belmont Derby listed first, so we'll go first there, Matt. Uh, I talked about him a little bit uh, at the end of our uh, analysis for the Belmont Derby. I think with the odds, 12 to 1, I think he will be double digits. I just like the progression. I think he's getting good. I like the fact that he gets a mile and a quarter finally. One of those Euros or more could run a huge race, but I love this as a betting race. I'm going to bet him with some of the top Europeans in here, Matt. Limited liability, 12 to 1 on the morning line is my top pick in the Belmont Derby. How about you? Yeah, hey, and Horse Center fans, you should enjoy this, uh, uh, our top picks up there. We got four different horses, and that's just an indication of how wide open these fields are, as we've talked about. Brian, I'm going to go in the Belmont Derby. I've got, I, I, I've got to stick with the man. I've got to stick with uh, uh, Charlie O'Brien, and I'm going to go with Nation's Pride off of a good performance in that Epson Derby and, and showing some nice wins. So. Uh, nation's pride is my pick in the in the derby i hear you matt now you you've been so excited about these top two european trainers coming over a couple times now you've said charlie o'brien i of course oh, yeah. I know with, excuse me i know with nation's pride you you you're talking about charles appleby who yes. charlie appleby who had such a huge year last year and nation's pride looks good Neither of us are on Stone Age who who could really be the class of the race, but I think we have two good picks. I'm going to bet both of those horses with Stone Age as well in the Belmont Derby. All right, I went first with the boys. You go first with the girls, Matt. It's the Belmont Oaks. Okay, just to be fair, Brian, I got to pick an American uh, on this big weekend, and I got to stick with Chad Brown. You know, he's the man in these big races. Um, I, I think Haughty. Could be a real talent. I know it's a tough spot, but I think she's really going to appreciate uh, making her second start on a much drier track. I think she's really talented. Chad Brown, I'm going haughty. Not a naughty pick for you at all, Matt. Haughty <laughs> is good. Haughty is talented. Haughty is Chad Brown, probably the best of the Chad Brown, maybe the best, because the other two are good, too. Uh, yeah, haughty has got a big shot in here. It was hard for me to stay away from two Europe, picking a European in either race, Matt. They're, they're just so good coming over. Concert Hall certainly looks like the class of the Euros for me. I, I, again, I think there is a speed filly coming from uh, uh, Europe in here that could make some noise as well. A lot of horses could make some noise, but Concert Hall is the one to beat. I, I don't know if she's as good as the ill-fated Santa Barbara from last year, for instance, but the, I think Concert Hall has a big shot in here. Interesting, interesting turf races, Matt Schiffman. Uh, I'm excited to bet them, especially the Belmont Derby. I got my three horses there with a 12 to one shot uh, and the Euros. So it should be fun. Before we uh, open up Saratoga, which just happens in a few days from now, Matt, I know you're excited about that. Let's uh, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, we got three days left at Belmont, and then Saratoga opens a week from today on Thursday when we are uh, taping the show. There's two other graded stakes races at Belmont, the Suburban, which may be kind of a prep race for some of the other big races like the Whitney and the Jockey Club, Jockey Club Gold Cup coming up at Saratoga. Hey. We didn't give out wagers, but I'll tell you, folks, these are the kind of races where you might want to do some trifectas. Big fields, big prices are possible. Whatever. Have fun, and thanks for watching the show. Thank you, Matt Shipman. We appreciate it. Thanks to our, uh, our great help back at the home office, Candace Curtis, for these awesome race graphics, and, of course, our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. We want to thank you, our fans. And uh, hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so. Uh, if you're a 
betting person, which I know most of you are, this is a very good weekend of racing, especially the two races we covered here at Belmont Park. So I wish you good luck. We'll be talking Saratoga, Saratoga, Saratoga next week on Horse Racing Nation for opening week at uh, just about our favorite racetrack in the world. I guess Delmar opens a week after that. All right, that's it. Enough with the show. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.